Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to West Lawrence High School in the dugout with Coach Brian Brown. And it is a day to celebrate, Coach. How many times do you get to the point where you're playing baseball in May? And here we are. We've been blessed here at West Lawrence. You know, this is my 13th season, and we've been in the state playoffs, you know, 12 of those 13. So we uh, – You expect it. Yeah, we expect it. You know, I talked early in the season, you know, every year – we break up the season into three sections. You know, you got your non-region preseason games, we call it. Yep. Then you got your region games, and here we are, you know, playoffs. So, uh, Coach, it says a lot of, uh, about a program, you know, it really speaks volumes when a program expects to win, when the players expect to win, the coaches expect this part of the season. We do. We well, do. Man, looking back at last week, uh, you know, we talked about Shaw coming to town, and you said they were going to be a tough team. Uh, I knew right off the bat, man, I – you know, just looking at their the games they played and, you know, the scout reports I was getting on them, you know, the, the kind of pitching they had. Yeah. I told our guys, I said, they're not your typical number four seed. You know, they these guys can play. And, uh, boy, they they got a good ball club. You know, Pat McGregor does a great job with those guys at Shaw. I mean, they respect the game. They played hard. I mean, it, it, was, it was really enjoyable, you know, yeah. playing those guys. Yeah. So, first game uh, – kind of had me worried oh me too oh yeah i'm a game one um you know we started out you know way brantley's on the mound for us um way pitches six strong innings i mean he threw six innings gave up two runs one earned struck out six walked one and scattered five hits i mean he really managed the strike zone well made pitches when he needed to and uh after the sixth inning we're tied two to two about ready to start the seventh, and the floodgates open, you know, and, and we uh, had to postpone it to Friday. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you you came out of that, and and you know just a wasted game pretty much. All right, kids thinking the whole time we're gonna play we're gonna play two we're gonna play two and rain hits like that. That's kind of a, 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 a mental toughness you gotta have. That is. When things like that happen now. That is. So we we knew going in um, after it rained. I told the guys, I said, all right, we're going to start at 2 o'clock tomorrow. I said, we got to finish game one. Yeah. And uh, Georgia High School approved us to play, um, to finish that game and then play game two. And then we split, we play a third game. Yeah. So we were prepared, uh, you know, play 14 innings or 15 innings. And uh, I just give credit to our guys, you know, just getting mentally prepared and and uh, getting ready for the grind. Mm -hmm. So. Let's review some stats now because we had some outstanding performance. From oh, we did. People. You know, in that game one, um, Bo Mullis was one for four. Sam Ryder, one for four. Nolan Daniel was one for three. Jacob Floyd was two for four with a double and an RBI. Go, man. Guy Anderberg was one for four with an RBI and a stolen base. Brandon Bruton was one for four. E.J. Holmes was one for three. And Logan Slaughter, one of our ninth graders, he's been a uh, – Cursey running for us all year. Yeah. I mean, he, he can fly. He can run. Very aggressive on the bases. You know, he had two, he had one stolen base, you know, in that game. And uh, it's, it's great when you're able to, to take guys that's over here, you know, sitting and watching and put them in the game. And they just, they've been focused. They've been watching. They're paying attention. And when they get in there, you know, they, they make things happen. You know, we, yeah. we, we like that out of Logan. Coach, you got your speed. You have uh, what? Uh, Three courtesy runners, don't you? We got three guys over here. We got, of course, Logan Slaughter, um, Ivy Phillips, uh, he's a junior, yeah. and uh, McKinley Kemp, you know, that's a junior. You know, McKinley's been battling. We didn't have him his whole sophomore season for, from an injury from football, and then, you know, three three quarters of this season, he was out. Yeah. You know, he had an injury from football as well. Yeah. And uh, just for them guys, for McKinley, you know, to come back and, and work hard with his with his rehab and mm -hmm. you know I think those guys that he was going to, to to get him back to full speed for us. Yeah, yeah. But when and they know they're gonna get the call, coach. They know, they know. With the Georgia High School speed up rule, you can curse the run for your pitcher and catcher. Mm -hmm. So uh, they know. You know, I, I sign them before the game even starts. Hey, you running for this guy? You running for this one? So yeah. anytime he gets on base, these guys standing right here in front of the dugout with the helmet on, just waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's. It's great, you know, having those guys available. Yeah, it just expands your team. It does. <clears throat> it does. And, yeah. <clears throat> and our guys understand, you know, when they come running off the field, you see them high-fiving each other. Yeah. You know, go get them, boy. Go do your job out there. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's great to see that. Yeah. 
Okay, so coach, we went on into uh, second game. So, so Nolan got the win on the on the uh, second game. On game two, yes, Nolan Daniel pitched a complete game, give it three runs, three earned, uh, eight strikeouts. Um, he had six walks, but it was very uncharacteristic for Nolan. Yeah. But and he scattered seven hits, you know. But we told him going into this game, yeah, you've been dominating all year on the mound, you know. But I mean, as the year goes on. We start facing other teams that can hit. They can swing the bat very well. So, uh, Nolan, I mean, like all year, just making pitches when you needed to, you know, to get people out. Yeah. All right, game two. Of course, we won eight to three. Uh, Bo Mullis was two for four. Nolan Daniel was two for three. Jacob Floyd was one for three with an RBI. A.J. Mathis was one for three with an RBI. Man. E.J. Holmes, what a game he had. He was two for three. Had a triple. Well, when he hit that triple, bases were loaded. So he got three RBIs, you know, <laughs> on, on that one. And uh, earlier in the game, he had a base hit and also had a stolen base. Yeah. And then uh, Ivy <laughs> Phillips, he had two stolen bases in that game. I mean, he, he stole second. And it was like two or three pitches later, that guy wasn't paying no attention to him at second. He swiped third. You know, it's just, it's just great having those guys – being that aggressive on the bases. Yeah, yeah. When so. you send them, you know they're going to – odds are they're going to make it. You feel That's good right. about sending them. They feel good about going. Well, we talked to them about, you know, being a uh, being a base runner. Guys, we're always looking to take the next base, you know, always being aggressive. Yeah. And a lot of times I've got so much confidence in them, I just give them a green light. Yeah. I don't, I don't give them signs. Yeah. I mean, it's just – Let them read it. Hey, because we, we've worked on it so much in practice – of getting good jumps and what to look for in pitchers. And, you know, it, I'm just I'm just thankful. You know, and we tell them, look, guys, good base runners, with your aggressiveness, you're going to get picked off sometimes. Yeah. You're going to get thrown out sometimes because you didn't get a good jump. You know, but don't let that take away your aggressiveness. You know, don't go out there the next time after you got thrown out. Don't go out there the next time being timid. You know, get a bigger lead. I mean, just – and. These guys have really matured, you know, especially Logan being a ninth grader. Um, his base running is just – it's been fantastic. And, you know, we, we, we're very appreciative about that. And uh, Ivy, you know, being a, a junior, you know, this is his first year with us. You know, he, his ninth and tenth grade year, he was down there at Jeff Davis. You know, Jeff Davis won a state championship last year in AA. And, uh, you know, what, what an asset he's been with us, you know, extremely fast. And of course, McKinley. You know, uh, McKinley's McKinley. I mean, you see him flying around on the football field <laughs> hitting folks. Uh, yeah. So we know what kind of speed he's got. Yeah. And uh, just being aggressive on the bases. Speed to burn. Yes, sir. And your stats have to look good on stolen bases. They do. I mean, in that three-game series, we ain't even got the game three yet. But uh, in that three-game series, we were 10 for 12, you know, on stolen bases. <laughs> and one of those times we got caught, that was, that was a, a first and third play that we put on. So, yeah, we got out, and it counts as a stolen base. Yeah. But – we scored a run. Anytime you can score a run to give up an out, we'll take it. That's right. We'll take it. So, uh, um, if you don't mind, I'll move on to game three. But hold on. How many wins is that for Nolan? Nolan. Oh, my goodness. That's number nine. He's 9-0 nine and oh on the year. So, he is another record. He is tied with Tyler Green for wins in the single season. So, one more victory for Nolan. Yeah. He – Breaks the school record for a single season. So, uh, he just keeps on just tearing up yeah, our record you know. book, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great for him. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Game three. Jacob Floyd's on the mound. Uh, Jacob threw four innings. Uh, gave up one earned, one run, one was earned. Struck out nine. Walked three and scattered two hits. You know, what a fantastic job. Yeah, man. And uh, because the pitch counts, because he, you know, he pitched the seventh inning of of game one, yeah. Um, AJ Mathis brought him in in relief. He was a sophomore, uh, lefty. Pitched three innings, gave up two runs, two earned, struck out five, walked four, gave up three hits. You know, just a, a great job of him. You know, what a situation for a sophomore to come in the game. You know, with, you know our season's on the line. I mean, it's you know it's a three to one ball game at that time. And, you know, he comes in and. Once he handled the pressure of what was going on, yeah. he settled in, started throwing strikes. I said, look, buddy, you throw strikes, they're not going to hit you. 
I said, we're being solid defensively today. I said, hit the strike zone, better make them put in play, and our guys will make plays behind you. You know, and he – he settled down. He went to work. Went to work, man. And it was just it was fantastic to watch. Yeah. Um, game three. Nolan Daniels, one for three with a triple. Uh, Guy Enderberg, one for two, a double with an RBI. A.J. Mathis was two for three with a double and an RBI. Bradley Wilson, two for three, three RBIs sure. in that game. And, of course, Logan Slaughter, he, had, he swiped two bases in that game as a, as a courtesy runner. Yep. And McKinley Kemp. He had two stolen bases in that game as well. Yeah. So, uh, it's just, uh, you know, my hat's off to Shaw. I mean, because we had to really put some pressure on them. They had three guys that pitched that just pounded the strike zone. You know, we had to make some adjustments at the plate. And I'm very, very thankful for our guys to be mentally focused and have a game plan when you go up there. Mm. All right, we know what our umpire's calling the pitches. So, we, we got to adjust. Because he was he was consistent both ways. We were getting the same pitch calls that, that Shaw was getting. Yeah. And I, I told our guys, whoever makes the adjustment in this game, whoever makes the adjustment at the plate is going to win. We made the adjustment. Shaw didn't. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just very thankful for our guys, you yeah. know, to – and I'm going to give credit to our region uh, for the, the, the games that we played – the close ball games we had all year long prepared us for that situation, you know. And, and uh, I mean, speaking of our region, um, Spalding, who was the number four seed in our region, yep. took two out of three from Northside Columbus, the one seed from that region, you mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, Seth Harris has done a fantastic job at Spalding, you know, and I just wish him all the best. I hope both of us make it to the Elite Eight, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, well, Coach, <clears throat> we're going to take a short break. We want to come back and talk a little bit more baseball with Coach Brown. We're going to talk about what's going to happen this week with Eastside rolling into town. I believe it's Thursday, right? Thursday, yes, Coming sir. up in just a moment, you'll hear all about it here on the Coach's Show. So stay with us. Experience the perfect blend of style and comfort at Hunter's Point Luxury Apartment Units. These three-bedroom, two-bath duplexes are beautifully designed with a look of hardwood flooring, modern fixtures, and plenty of natural light. The kitchen is outfitted with stainless steel appliances, beautiful countertops, and cabinetry. And these brand-new three-bedroom, two-bath duplexes are complete with garage. These duplexes are move-in ready. Hunter's Point Luxury Apartment Units. Call K. Grace and Company now at 353-1123 and visit Hunter's Point Luxury Apartment Units, conveniently located on Claxton Dairy beside Springdale Park. Hello, I'm Taylor Knight from the Community Bank of Dublin, Lawrence County, and we offer great customer service. Come in today and let us open a checking, savings, or CD account for you. So come see us at the Community Bank of Dublin, Lawrence County, where we have been serving the community for more than 12 years. Welcome you back, ladies and gentlemen, here in the dugout with Coach Brian Brown, and we're talking baseball again at West Lawrence. Now, Coach, you said something a few weeks ago I want to expand on a little bit. You made me think of it a moment ago on the, on the Coach Show when you said uh, about kids stealing bases and you know sometimes you're going to get it out you said something a few weeks ago that that uh younger players should pay attention to this is a sport where you fail most of the time that's right but that's right. you're still looked at as a success batting 300 or that's right when I mean, you bat 300 that means seven out of ten times <laughs> you made an out yeah you know and you look at guys that are in the major leagues. I mean, they, they have a career at 300 batting average. <laughs> they in the Hall of Fame. Right. You know? Yeah. And uh, it's just this game is so mentally uh, tough. Uh, you just you just have to stay focused. You know, we, we continue. You know, I've said it before on a coaches show. We have a saying. It's called FIDO, F-I-D-O. Forget it. Drive on. you got to have a short-term memory. You know, and our guys – after we lost game one, I mean, I, I walked out there. Of course, they're down. They're up. They're sad, upset. Yeah. I said, guys, we've been in the, our program. We've been in this situation before where we lost game one. I said, but we're not done. We're not done yet. I said, Nolan's on the mound game two. He's going to give us a good ball game. We're going to swing the bats. We're going to push them to game three. 
you know, and, and Shaw, you know, he did a great job setting up his rotation. You know, he threw his number two game one. We threw our number three. He, we threw our number one game two. He threw his number three. So come game three, they had that big boy on the mound. Yeah. He's going to TCC with Nolan. You know, and so we and we had Jacob Floyd, our number two on the mound. You know, so I told our guys, you know what this guy's going to throw. Well, I'll tell you what. And before that game, I said, all right, Nolan, you know this guy better than anybody. Talk to us. What's he going to throw? I said, you're basically going to describe yourself. You know, he's anywhere from 87 to he can touch 90, you know, with a, with a hard slider. Mm -hmm. um, and he told our guys, he says, he's going to come at you first pitch fastball, you know, try to get ahead, and you got to hit his pitch. You know, so what a great job as a senior, you know, to, to share that information with our guys mm -hmm. so we could be mainly focused when we got up to the plate. Yeah. You know, and, man, it was a battle. It was tough. I think it was – what was it? Three to three going into the going into the sixth inning or something like that, and uh, our guys just they just pulled through. You know, I've been talking all year about playmakers. You know, big time players making big time plays. You know, when the time when the game's on the line. You know, and gotta have it. I mean, wow. I mean, you you take uh, you know Bradley Wilson end up with three RBIs that game. You know, that's ninth grader. Yeah. Not tough situation. I mean, he just. That guy kept pounding him away, away, away. We had runs on second and third. He hits a base hit to, to right field, and we score two. You know, it's yeah. just – because he, he went up there knowing what that guy was going to pitch, where he was going to throw it. He's not going to throw you your pitch, so you got to hit his. You know, that's a, that's a tough situation for a ninth grader, yeah. you know, to go up there and deliver like that. Yeah, Coach, you talk about it, though, all the time, adversity. We're going to face adversity. You're going to face right. it on the field. You're going to face it in life. What you going to do? Are you going to persevere? Are you going to push through? You have to have that mental toughness. And it comes from uh, from playing in games like this each and every season, 12 out of 13. There have been ninth and 10th graders. There have been juniors out there for sure, but ninth yes, and 10th graders out there who are coming back again and again. And That's it pays right. off. I mean, our seniors too, man, they getting it done at the plate. Getting it done in the field. I mean, it was a couple of times, you know, in game one, you know, Wade being a sophomore throwing game one in the state playoffs. Man. It was a couple of times, you know, you lose your focus a little bit. As I was a pitcher. I know how it is. Yeah. You know, guys out there short, time. He calls time and goes out there and says, and just calms him down, just talks to him. I don't have a clue what they talked about. But whatever he did, it broke his whatever – he was in, mm -hmm. he got him refocused. Yeah. He got back on the mound, choo, 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 just start throwing strikes. Yeah. You know, it's just – and that's so awesome to see. I mean, because it? for – for we got coaches on the field. I mean, you you got Nolan, Floyd, Guy, Bruton, Bo. I mean, Bo's in the outfield. You know, he's sitting there with, with a junior next to him, and he's got a sophomore over here. You know, he's just constantly talking to him and getting him in the right position because we – going, you know, before the – series even started we share with them a game plan you know if we have spray charts of where are all the hitters you know of and we told we told him we're going to holler at Bo Bo knows our play their their lineup yeah you know he's a smart guy i mean he just he knows what their lineup is so we would position Bo Bo would position Sam Bo yeah. would position AJ mm -hmm. you know i mean EJ you know, and it was just great to watch that, you know, just to see those guys, you know, just, just coaching on the field. Well, so. Coach, you, you got a lot to get ready for for Thursday with Eastside rolling Ooh, into town. Buddy. And, man, they're showing up. They are. They're 26-4 they and four on the year. 26-4. and four. I, I, That's that's a fantastic record. Yeah, I don't care who you played. I you don't care either. And four. You won 26 ball games. You're doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, and three of their losses, three of those four losses were to the same team, Woodward Academy. Uh -oh. And everybody knows about Woodward yeah. Academy, how tough those guys are, yeah. you know. And it was three tough. They, they had three losses, but it was three tough ball games. You know, I think one of them, I think Woodward ended up winning like seven to six and nine innings. You know, that sounds like one of ours was falling in that 14 yeah. game. Yeah. But, Who did they face first round? First round, they played uh, Thompson Bulldogs. And, uh, of course, East side swept them. They beat them uh, eight to three, the first game, and three to nothing the second game. Yeah. So, uh, 
that shows me right there, East Side's got some pitching. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I'm thankful for Shaw for what you brought to us, you know, first round. And uh, our guys are ready for the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, they're excited. Oh, yeah. So Thursday, what time? We set the time yet? Thursday, we got a doubleheader starting at 5 o'clock. Starting yeah. at 5 o'clock. So you get off at 5, you should be here by the, by the time we start the bottom of the, of the first inning. Hey, and Coach, you got to give props to the fans. Man, I'll tell you what, it was amazing. Just the, the sea of blue that we had out here. You know, it was – I mean, you, you couldn't – there wasn't any seat up close. I mean, I think there were some places where, you know, it was two or three deep. Fans were, were full. Our fans were full on this side. Yep. Some of them even sat over on Shaw side. Had to. Had to. I mean, because it was – but it, the energy that they bring, you know, our guys, they know they're out there. They feed off of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have people, you know, because we got holes in that dugout right there, you know. So you, you can see them. You know, so you, see, you hear some of them, come on, guys, keep your heads up. You have some fans just hauling through. That's fantastic, man. I mean, it's just – it's awesome. It just gets them pumped up, and everybody's on the same page. And I mean, it's great. It's great. I mean, you talk about was it Texas A and M that has a, the twelfth man? Yep. You know, in football season. Yep. You know, that's what our fans have been. You know, it's just it's great. It makes a huge difference. It does. Yeah. So we're going to advance. We're going to second round. East side's coming in. You want to be out here as quickly as possible. Come early if you can. This coming Thursday, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a big battle. I mean, they're, they're good. I mean, they're – and uh, I told the guys, you know, we're in the Sweet 16. You know, everybody's got players. Everybody's got arms. You know, they're they, they, they going to have a good catcher. They're going to have they gonna be solid defensively. Yeah. And I said, you know what, guys? We are too. We are too. I said, we expect to be here. We're here. I said, we can play. I said, hey, yeah. We got uh, we start at five o'clock. Uh, we'll play game one. Thank goodness there's no rain in the forecast this week. You know, bring your sunscreen. It's gonna be hot. Oh, I think right. Thursday is supposed to be close <clears throat> to ninety degrees. Um, but you know, we we need you. We need you. Come on out here. And uh, if you if you can't make the five o'clock game, you know, the second game will probably start around seven thirty. Mm -hmm. You know, that we'll be up under the lights. Come on when you can. And uh, be loud and proud for us. Yeah, it's going to be a great atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. We want to make sure you're out, turn out this Thursday. And, Coach, again, let's brag on you, Coach and staff. Oh, Jody Pollock has just been phenomenal. Oh, man. I mean, just – well, I mean, I get the scouting reports and I give them to him. And, you know, then like today's practice, tomorrow, Wednesday, you know, he'll talk to the, the infielders, you know, about, you know, where they need to be, how we're going to position each – you know, each batter, you know, I'll talk to the outfielders. Um, I'll hand our pitchers. You know, we'll, we'll sit down as a pitching staff and we'll we'll go through their lineup, you know, because I'll, I'll get good stuff from, from different coaches, you know, about what some guys can hit, what they can't hit. Yeah. You know, are we going to go right at them or are we going to pitch them backwards? You know, what what's – and uh, so he does a great job, you know, just – and What a great temperament. He does. I mean, his energy and, you know, his – the kids love him. They respect him. You know, it's, I'm so thankful. You know, that it's the you know the two of us are, have got this going. Um, yeah. And uh, I, that's what we tell our seniors. Look, guys, it's two of us. I said, yep, you're players slash coaches. <laughs> so when you we gonna talk to you of what we're looking at, what we're looking for, and guys, if you see it before we do, holler at us. You know, we'll you know we, we're all in this together. We yeah. all wanna. We all want to win in advance, you know, so uh, yeah, very excited. Yeah. All right. Got a lot to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen. So come on out as the Raiders progress in the baseball season. It's going to be a beautiful day Thursday. Again, wear your sunscreen, put on a cap, uh, hydrate a little bit. That's right. And yeah. if we split, um, you know, game three will be Friday at 5 o'clock too. Yeah. So Yeah. Appreciate what you do, Coach. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hope we keep it rolling. Thanks for joining us out here at West Lawrence in the dugout with Coach Brian Brown. Thank <laughs> you.